He has a wonderful family. And the ministry at East New York is also a blessing to us. He's a husband well loved by his wife. It's all over Sister Youngson's face. She can't hide it. But uh, in this hour of affliction, we can now say that we have known something else. And that is our pastor is a strong and courageous leader. For he has not shown any sign of weakness. He is a mighty leader. And I just want to let him know this morning that all is well with him. We have that assurance. You know, when you have a problem and you have or you know the solution, then there is no problem. Praise the Lord. And we know that the solution today is in Jesus. So we just want to encourage you, our pastor, that all is well. I want to also let you know that we at East New York love you. I will be praying for you. I will be anticipating your quick return. Uh, Pastor is going to speak to us this morning. We know that God is going to use him to bless us. But before he speaks to us, we will listen to this beautiful voice again. Sister Phillips, as she prepares our heart for the sermon. broken mine was mended he became sin now I am I'm free the cross he carried bore my burdens the nails that held him set me free his life for mine, his life for mine, how could it ever be that he would die? Suffering brought me healing. He spilled his blood to fill my soul. His crowns of thorns made me royalty. His sorrow gave
Someone say another amen. amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Praise the Lord. Um, there's this other item that I need to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, the money that was collected from, from here at East New York uh, for, remember, the Ghana church, the church in Ghana, remember? Okay, the money has gone to Ghana and is uh, uh, picked up from Western Union. And actually, I asked them to divide the money into three parts for three churches. And um, I got the indication that this Sabbath, they're presenting the money to the churches. Can you say amen? amen. That the money will go to do ministry to lead souls to the kingdom of God. And here at home, it's coming to my attention that our van is falling apart. And uh, it needs an emergency care. And some are saying that emergency won't help it. Emergency can uh, save it. So we need, to, uh, we, we need to get a new one. And so I'm going to promote that. And in the course of this service, we need to do something about that. Uh, so put that at the back of your mind. We cannot allow the, uh, the old van to fall apart with our children in it. So we need to do something, and even now. So think about this. How many of us will want us to get a better van? Let me see your hands. Oh, praise the Lord. So there's support for that. So think and pray that today we can sow a seed for a new and better van for East New York. Can somebody say amen? amen. Okay, that's one. And number two is the New York 13 that is coming up. Everybody knows about New York 13? It's an important program that we need to be promoting and we need to get involved. The General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the World Headquarters, is coming to New York to help evangelize the city. And it, it's coming from the vision of Ellen White that the work in the city, New York, mentioned in the writings 100 years ago, that the work in New York must be a model of the work around the world. And the world's leader reading that says that we need to do something in New York. Can you say amen? Which tells me that if this is a vision that came from heaven, that means that we at New York, if we get involved, if we dedicate our lives and our time involved in this work, that God is going to use us even to be an example for somebody around the world. Are you with me? Brethren, this is serious business. And they are devoting, they, vote, they voted $300,000 for this work. But I'm hearing that they have actually voted a, 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 a million dollars for this work. So those of you who are Bible workers or who want to be Bible workers, train yourselves. Because job is coming to New York. And whoever, whatever part that you want to play, prepare yourself for that. Uh, God's work is to be done. Now, what I want us to do is to find to East New York to get involved. Let's find a place. Now, this is not something, something simple, small we're going to do here indoor. We have to do it outdoors because they're going to support us with money. We have to find a place wherever. I, I think the East is fine because it's not saturated too much with Adventism. We find a, a place, a lot that we can do evangelism there and find a land or a building close to it because when they give us money to do evangelism and open a church, we are moving in. You didn't hear me. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. We already here are, uh, maximize our use of this place. We want to go somewhere. Now God is sending money from General Conference. So all you have to do is take the money, go open a church, and then you move in. All right, I leave that there. I just leave that there. And then go to my California. And <laughs> all right, so now let's come to the word of God. Can you say amen? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, 
uh, this is your time, and uh, we yield it to you that you may speak the word unto our hearts and direct our path that we may, by your grace, uh, order our steps in your word and in your way. So when time comes for the kingdom to burst upon us, none of us will be lost. But all of us, because of the word and because of Jesus, we may find ourselves by faith in the kingdom of God. Thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. You have the title in your bulletin, Press On to the Finish Line. Uh, the book of Hebrews was written to hurting people. Do I have your attention? What did I say? Very good. The book of Hebrews was written to hurting people. It was written to people who had lost their rights and were losing their lives because of their faith in Jesus. And some were considering giving up on Christ and going back to Judaism. Hebrews was written to encourage Christians to never give up, even in trouble, but press on by faith to victory in Jesus. Emperor Nero, Emperor Nero, uh, you say like the president of Rome, Emperor Nero carelessly, and, uh, Emperor Nero's carelessness and extravagance had crippled the economy of Rome, and to replenish it, he resorted to persecuting Christians. In AD 64, a great fire broke out uh, in, in Rome, which destroyed a large part of the city. Nero was suspected of having set the fire in order to make room for his new golden palace. So to divert attention from himself, he accused the Christians of having caused the disaster, and so so many of them were tortured to death. It was in those days that Hebrews was written to encourage those suffering Christians to never give up. Never give up on Christ, but to press on to the finish line in the victory of Jesus. So today I echo Paul's sentiment to, uh, to Hebrews, uh, to East New York to press on to the finish line and never give up. Paul depicts the Christian life as a relay race. Those in the corridor, if you will come in, I will appreciate that very much. Uh, somebody call those in the corridor outside. Now that the doors are open, we can see outside. Call them to come in. Paul depicts the Christian race as a relay race, a race in which members of the team run their turn and pass off the baton to others to finish the race. Understand there are different types of relay race. There's a three-legged race. You know about that? There's the egg in the spoon race. And then also... Uh, you run in the sack race. You run that back home? Yes, yes, yes. But ours as Christians, ours is a cross on your back, faith in your hand race. Take up your cross and follow me is our call into the race. In Hebrews chapter 11, Paul describes the race in which the faithful, having finished their turn, pass off the baton to another generation till the last group takes the baton to the finish line. And I want to say that we are in the last days. And uh, we are expected 
to make it to the finish line. That's why verse 39 says, and these all, chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39, and these all, and these all having obtained a good report through faith, what happened to them? Receive not the promise. These all, you remember the, 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 the hall of faith? Remember all those listed in, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11? About Abel, by faith, offered a better sacrifice. Are you with me? Abraham, by faith, offered his only begotten son. Moses, by faith, refused to be called the daughter of Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's daughter, son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, by faith, all those faith people uh, in the hall of faith, Bible said they obtained a good report through faith. Yes, they were victorious through faith, but received not the promise. In other words, uh, Abel, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Joshua, all by faith won the Olympic golden medal but did not receive the trophy. Are you with me now? They won the medal. They were victorious. But something is missing. The Bible says, although they were faithful, they won uh, true faith, yet they did not receive the promise. They did not receive the trophy. Hmm. Why? Because East New York had not been given the opportunity to reach the finish line. Remember, we are in a relay race. One group takes the baton and run their course, and then they transfer the baton to another group, and they run their course to another generation. They run their course, and they transfer the baton to uh, baton of faith to another generation. And they run their course until the last group will reach the finish line. And so all these run their courses, but they did not receive the promise because the race is not over yet. It's New York has not been given the opportunity to run to the finish line. Are you with me so far? So all these, having obtained a, promi- a, report, a good report, did not receive the promise. And, and so verse 40 now tells us what plan, God plan, God's plan is. God, verse 40, God having, verse 40, go to verse 40. Are they with us or are they against us? God, having provided some better thing for us. Huh? Look at the wording. Look at the wording. God, all these Moses, Abraham, and Jacob, and Isaac, and Noah, all these great men of God, having obtained a good report, they've run their course, did not receive the trophy. Because... All have not run the course. All have not reached the end, the finish line. So why God, having provided some better thing for us, for us now, that they, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, without us, East New York, should not be made what? Perfect. Are we together on this? Looking, like, looking, to, looking at me like I'm in a foreign land somewhere. So, these should not receive the trophy without us. That's anticlimactic. You have to wait till the whole Olympic is finished. And then you give the trophy to the winners. So now we come to verse chapter 12. Come to chapter 12 and then see what is expected of us. Chapter 12, verse 1. That's why chapter 12, verse 1, speaking to us, says, 
speaking to us, says, We are what? Wherefore, seeing we are also our what? Compassed about with so great a cloud of what? Witnesses. Let us what? Lay aside every weight and a sin that so easily beset us. Now, let you stop there. So we are now, today, every one of us, you might think that you are doing something in secret. You are not. You are compassed about by great witnesses. There's nothing in secret. They see everything. That's why the Bible says, of course, angels are also part of this. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses in the amphitheater of salvation, in God's eternal Olympics, running the last leg of salvation relay. Now, for what purpose? Well, why are they? Uh, why are we compassed about with such great witnesses? And if you if you want to picture this, it's like um, in 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 Rome they have amphitheater. It's like here you have. Uh, 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 tears upon tears upon tears going all the way up and folks fill the amphitheater like the stadium today like the stadium today and then you are uh, in the in the in the in the in the, um, uh, the, 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 the center you are the center and all these people are now their eyes are upon you because now you have to run the race to the finish line so they are there to cheer you up and to encourage you to make it to the finish line. Is that not what they do in the stadium? You, 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 you support your, your team and you go there and you do what? You cheer them up to win, to win the prize. And so that's why the Bible says we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses in this amphitheater of salvation in God's Olympics because we are running the last leg of salvation relay. Oh, so we are now being cheered up to press on to the finish line. To reach the pearly gates, to enter the promised land, until all God's people receive their victor's crown. But how do we make it to the finish line in such a time as this of economic corruption and political quagmire and spiritual darkness and moral decrepitude and plenty of troubles. Paul's answer, Paul's answer, he says, shake off, press on, cool down, look up, and never give up. Let's go to... Uh, Verse 1, chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, what must we do? Paul says, lay, let us what? Lay aside what? Every weight and the sin which doth so easily what? Beset us. Brethren, sin is a weight. Sin is a weight. You carry sin, you carry weight. Sin is a weight. And to get to the finish line, Paul says, we must, we must drop the weight. Lay aside every. Every weight means shake every weight, especially the sin that so easily what? Beset us. And what is that sin that so easily beset us? And when you read the Bible, it doesn't tell you the sin. Uh, we are not told what sin that is because everybody's besetting sin is not the same. Only you and God know the sin that may lead you to hell. Therefore, each one is expected to acknowledge that sin and shake it off before it is too late. Shake off, lay aside, drop it before it is too late. For some, it's hatred. They can't seem to shake that off. They've been in the church for donkey years. They still harbor hatred in their heart. Bible says, as you are heading toward the finish line, as we are living in the last days, as time is no more, that we need to shake off every sin. 
every way and the sin that so easily beset us. So whatever it is, you need to identify it, you need to acknowledge it, and you need to lay it aside before it's too late on your soul. And we Adventists know better. We know that probation is close and your case come up. And this instruction is for us to shake it off before they pass by your name and they stamp unsaved. And it's over. They're never going to take that docket and reopen it and decide your case. When they pass that by, it's over forever. Shake off. That's Paul's instruction. For others, it's malice. How about, how about mas, malice, malice in the heart? Time in which we live does not allow us to harbor any evil in our hearts. And for others, it's fornication. They can't seem to give their life to Jesus because they love that fornication. Bible says in these times, you need to shake it off before you, you are lost. And so still others, is adultery. And still others, it's lies. Paul says, drop it all. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. And still others, and this is hard for me to say, uh, but I need to say it because time is no more. Uh, I know that most ministers don't say this, and I have not been saying this, but I think uh, the time... It's upon us. The time in which we lead the man that we tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Because if, if any weight can, can, can uh, interrupt, disrupt our progress to the finish line, then we need to know whatever it is that can impede our progress to the finish line. For some, for others, it's immigration issues. Am I talking truth? Let me tell you something, brethren. Let me tell you something. Some of us, listen to me carefully, some of us would have to go back home in order to make it to the finish line. You didn't hear me out there. Some of us will have to go back home in order to make it to the finish line. You cannot, you cannot allow America uh, to, to, to uh, disrupt your, 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 your connection to God or to spirituality or to your faithfulness or to your honesty or, or, or you cannot gain America and lose the kingdom of God. See, the devil will, will want to lock us up in certain situations that we cannot get ourselves out of until he destroys us and destroys our souls. Some of us, we have to pray to God and ask him to lead us. And if we have to go back home, so be it. Are you listening to me? I know that it's injustice in America to bar West Indians from gaining legal access to America. I know that. Because you cannot bring a man who, uh, who was mining, uh, or a woman who was mining his business uh, in Africa, and you cannot bring him to the borders of, uh, of your country to serve your country, and you lock him out. It's injustice. And we ought to pray for a time when West Indians will be given total, complete access to America without any hindrance. Can you say amen? amen? But in the meantime, you cannot allow the American dream to rob you of your heavenly dream. Are you with me so far? Some of us have to go, uh, have to go back home. Go back home. It, it's really, it's not, it's not, it's, it's a serious matter. 
And we need to pray to God to help us on that because Paul is saying that God is saying that we need to drop every weight. There's no little sin and big sin. No little lie and big lie. Paul says sin is a weight that will prevent your movement to the finish line. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight. And that includes every secret sin we cherish. And let us run the race to the finish line. Interestingly, listen to me. Interestingly, the Greeks run their Olympics with no encumbrances. Have you seen those statues of Greeks? Haven't you seen when, you know, the statues of Greeks with like ball in their hand, like throwing something? Have you seen that? What is unique about those pictures? They, were, they are naked. You said the sister. They are naked. The Olympics run their race naked. I'm not saying we should run race here naked. That's what I'm saying. But by Paul borrowing this this symbolism, this metaphor, spiritually, he's saying that therefore Christians ought to run the Christian race, the spiritual race, spiritually naked. Nothing, no fig leaf, nothing, no encumbrances, no weight on the body as we run this race. In other words, those things that we cherish, that we, sometimes we come to the church and we become Christians, we refuse to give up. Paul says now it's time to let go. Those secret sins that we cherish, that we think nobody is watching, and so we just do it, you know, and, and, and we say, I, I have my right to do my own thing and nobody is going to tell me anything. No, sir! The time has come, Paul says, if you're going to get to the finish line, you need to drop it all! There are people in the church who are so sensitive, 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 sensitive. You can't say anything to them and they boycott church forever. The pastor can preach anything and they own every sin in the world. So the pastor preach about any sin, they're preaching about me. They have a pattern on every sin. Paul says, it's time to let go. Can you say amen? So yes, Paul wants us to run spiritually naked. So yes, drop it all. Shake it off so you can press on to the finish line. Can somebody say amen? So how must we, uh, how do we make it to the finish line? Paul's second point. It says, press on, but calm down. Press on, but calm down. The same verse 1, chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, therefore let us run the race with what? Patience. The word there, patience. The word patience there. The word patience there means endurance. And you can read other translations, it will tell you endurance. Not patience in the sense of, you know, quietude and patience and, and, and that kind of thing, but endurance. Endurance. In the Greek, it means living under a burden without breaking down. Ha having to shoulder a burden without breaking down. It's the capacity to bear pain without complaint. Trials without throwing in the towel. Persecution without dropping out or giving in or giving up. Endurance is the ability to take punishment without losing your temper. And we all need that in church. Can somebody say amen? There are too many people who are so sensitive that we cannot even discuss uh, uh, anything amicably anymore. 
in, 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 in seconds and we are all mad and frustrated and frustrated and we cannot even advance the work of the Lord. It's ability to endure pain without complaining. The ability to take punishment without losing your temper. It's ability to take abuse without taking vengeance. Remember, it's a vengeance is mine. That's my, my role to repay. Don't take it upon yourself. Just serve me and trust me and depend on me for I will do what is right. So, so Paul says, as you are running the race, run the race with endurance. Endurance is a quality only found among matured Christians. You measure a matured Christian by the quality of endurance in his life. Oh, yes. It's the ability to remain calm on the provocation. Can't you see that in Jesus, when he was on the cross, he was under severe provocation. This man came down to save humanity. Look at the treatment he's catching from them. And if it were you, what are we going to do? He had to have endurance to run the race to the finish line. So there, he remained calm under provocation. And the Spirit of the Lord used his heart to say, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they do. Endurance. Peter, Peter caught it. Peter caught it. Peter said, uh, it's in the first Peter chapter 2 verse 23. Peter said, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. He not, in other words, he did not, he did not uh, do eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And if we did that, there would be no tooth in the house. <laughs> and people wonder, what happened to you guys over there? Because <laughs> we practice, practice an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and we have no tooth. <laughs> there's too much trouble. <laughs> so, so Peter said, no, 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 Jesus didn't practice that. Peter, when, Jesus when reviled, he reviled not. Again, when he suffered, he threatened not. But what did he do? Committed himself to him that judgeth what? Righteously. Oh my goodness. So he was able to say, Father, just forgive them. That's the quality of character God expects of us as we run to the finish line. Can somebody say amen? Run with endurance. God knows we can run the race to the finish line, all frustrated and agitated. So calm down, but press on and never give up. Hey, I tell you, people will step on your toes, even in the church. Oh, you know, on your job and even in your home, they will step on your toes. But with this understanding, you have to now calm down, but, but, but press on and never give up. I'm telling you, those who live righteously are going to suffer persecution. So what you got to do is to calm down. But press on and never give up. Oh yes, don't expect a crossless crown. Must Jesus, must, must Jesus uh, carry the cross alone? No, there's cross for everybody. So do not come to church and expect that there will be no cross. As, you know, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, let this cup pass from me. But at the end of the day, you have to, you have to pray, let not my will, but thy will be done. And you don't get to choose your own cross. Whatever cross that they, God chooses for you, that's what you're going to carry. But you're going to carry that cross with endurance. Calm down. 
Come down your spirit. But, 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 press on. And never give up. Oh, thank God. Sister Singleton is awake. Sister Singleton, now work, work with me, Sister Singleton. Work with me. Uh, uh, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's always a cross before the crown. Am I talking truth? Uh, uh, suffering before glory. Humiliation before elevation. So calm down. But, 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 press on and never give up. If you forget everything I have said, remember this, that, that, that you need to shake off, calm down, but press on and never give up. Oh, yes. I will let you know that there will be trophy. There will be trophy across the finish line. Price at the end of your labor. So cool down, but press on and never give up. Oh, have you realized that the stone uh, no 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 sometimes God sometimes God uses discipline to produce holiness in his people so cool down but press on and never give up brethren oh my goodness let me tell you something let me tell you something sometimes you know we pray for healing and we have to pray for healing can you say amen but even if not that's how the saints of old day, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were going to the fire, and, 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 and they said, we have prayed, and we know how God will rescue, but, 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 even if not, we're not going to bow. So even if after you have prayed for healing, and healing is not coming, healing is not the only victory in life. So you don't have to be disappointed that, oh, that you, you, you prayed for healing and you didn't get healing. No, sir. John the Baptist, the man, the most important man uh, before uh, Christ. Jesus said of John the Baptist, of all those who are born of women, none is greater than John. Who do we think we are? That we have to suffer a little affliction and all of a sudden we have boycotted and we are forsaking God. No, sir. Man beloved by Christ. Jesus said, of all those born, none is greater than him. But what happened to John? What happened to John? Have you read your scriptures? His head was chopped off. Doesn't God see? So you don't have to worry. If you know God, you know that whatever he does is for your good. Oh yes, all things. How much? All things will work together for your good because you trust in Jesus. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about because in the end, all things. Oh yes. You know what I believe? What I believe? What I believe? I'll tell you, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, Jesus allowed John the Baptist. This is the man who came to introduce Jesus. The man who came to introduce Jesus. Jesus allowed John the Baptist. John the Baptist sent visitors to go to Jesus and ask him, John the Baptist, Jesus, I am in prison. Don't you see? That's prayer. I am in prison. I need some rescue here. I presented you before the world, and here I'm suffering in dungeon. And where are you? Jesus didn't go to rescue him. Sometimes our prayers, Jesus knows better. And so sometimes our prayers are not answered the way we want it. Huh? But sometimes God, not sometimes, God knows better. This is what I believe, that John the Baptist, Jesus suffered John the Baptist to die. But you know something? Think about this. John the Baptist was a herald. A herald is the one who introduces the Messiah. In any kingdom, any palace, when you go to African palace or West Indian palace, you have palace in the West Indies? Oh, you need to import, import, import palaces. <laughs> it's about time. In every palace, you have a herald. Herald is the one when the king is going in a procession, he goes first and he cries out, the king is coming. The king is coming. Make way for the king. Make way. So he is a herald. And a herald goes before. That's why the Bible says Elijah must come. You remember Elijah must come in the Bible? It's a herald. A herald must come before the Messiah. 
And so John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah, herald. All right. So here was a herald who has introduced Jesus Christ. And he, Jesus Christ says, you know, I mean, John says, I need to be rescued. Jesus said, no, you're not going to be rescued. And Jesus allowed him to die. You know what I believe? My goodness. You remember when Jesus Christ died? Graves, the graves of some saints were open. And they came out. My goodness, if he didn't die, he wouldn't come out. So he has allowed him to die. That he will be, res- be part of those that Jesus was resurrect to lead to the kingdom of God. He is a herald. He must go with the Messiah. We don't know what God's mind is. We just have to let him do what is best. So just, just whatever come your way, cool down, but press on and never give up. God knows what he's doing. Oh yes, the stone has to tumble in the water many times to be smooth. So calm down. You may be tumbling in the water now, but calm down, but press on and never, never give up. Oh, don't you know that the gold that is going to shine must be tried in the fire? So why, why frustrate yourself? You are in the crucible. You must be tried in the fire. So therefore, knowing that you got what? Calm down, run with patience. The race that they said before, calm down, but what? Press on. And what? Never give up. Oh, but I tell you, weeping may endure for the night, but what is coming? Joy is coming in the morning. So what you got to do? Shake off your sin, press on in the race, Calm down in the storm. Look up to Jesus and get to the finish line and never give up. So the last point, how do we make it to the finish line in times of trouble? Paul's third point is in verse 2. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, Endure the what? The cross, despising its shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Christian athletes must keep their eyes fixed on Jesus and nothing else. Oh, yes, our eyes on the prize if we are going to win the prize. You can make it to the finish line looking at the wrong things in your life and on the internet and on the TV. You can make it to the finish line holding on to wrong relationships. Drop it. If you shock it up, break it. You can make it to the finish line Worshipping your iPad and iPod and iPhone without any time for Jesus. Look to Jesus means fix your eyes on Jesus. Meditate on his strength and receive his power to overcome in times of trouble. Why Jesus? Because in him we live and move and have our beings. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because he is the, he's the source and the example of our faith as we raise to the kingdom of God. Look to Jesus, for he alone has made it to the finish line. Who for the joy set before him. The Bible says what? He endured the cross, despising his shame, and is now seated on the throne of God. How did Jesus endure the cross? The Bible says... By despising its shame. Do you get it? How did he do that? In other words, in other words, Jesus cared nothing about the shame of the cross. Did you get that? Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame. In other words, 
in order to endure your cross, you have to learn to despise a shame. There's a shame that comes with the cross. But not until you have learned to despise the shame, you will not be able to endure the cross. And that's what Jesus did. He, he, in other words, when they tell him about the cross, oh yeah, it's a shameful death. Death that will make Israel despise you. A death that is so uh, 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 shameful that people will reject you. And he knew that. He heard about that. He knew all of that. But you know what Jesus did? Whenever they told him about the cross, oh, Jesus, you're going to die on the cross. It's a shameful death. You're going to die naked. Shame. Jesus said, oh. So the cross, chuck. You know, that's what West Indians do. He despised it. He, he looked at it, at it as if it's nothing. Oh, yes, I came down here to die for humanity, and I'm going to die for humanity no matter the cost. Despise it. And that's what, that's what Moses did. Hebrews 11, by faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach, shame. Look at this. Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. The shame, he despised it. That is even, it's even glorious than the treasures of Egypt. For he had, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he what? Endured as seeing him who is what? Invisible. Oh, that's what Jesus did. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised its shame. Ah, and he, Jesus, is now victorious. That's why I look to Jesus, even in trials and troubles, and tribulations, so I can learn to endure my pain, and despise its shame, oh yes, so I can press on to the finish line, oh my goodness, Jesus has conquered my pain, and its shame, so, 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 that's why I am not afraid of, of the devil, the Bible says, fear not the one who, uh, fear not the one who can kill the body, but can kill the soul, Oh my goodness. Uh, so, 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 so I, le- I look to Jesus in order that I may endure my pain, endure my cross, and despise his shame. That's why I'm not afraid of cancer. Bring it on. In the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We are victorious. The devil cannot frighten us anymore. That's why in the book of Revelation, he said, they, 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 they did not they did not love their lives unto the death. In other words, they did not cling unto life. Oh, life, 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 don't go. No, we are ready to die. In the name of Jesus. Because, because he said, that's why Jesus, God sent Jesus Christ to those who in their lifetime are so afraid of death so they were held in bondage. Because they don't want to die. That's why they lie. Yes, because the reason why the reason why Satan has held so many of us in bondage is because of death. We are afraid of death, so we won't tell the truth. We are afraid of death, so we lie to cover ourselves. We are afraid of death, that's why uh, so we, we, can, we can do mischievous things to make money to save our skin. But those saints of old, they came to a point where because Jesus has conquered death, they no longer became afraid of death. So Satan, had, uh, Satan did not know what to do with them. 
They love not their lives unto death, so they will not do everything just to preserve their lives. No, sir. They are willing to even give their lives if that comes for the glory of the Lord. Can you hear? Can you, can you say amen? Oh, yes. That's why I look to Jesus. So when trouble comes your way, don't murmur. Don't complain. But look to Jesus. When discouragement comes your way, don't give up. Don't give in. But look to Jesus. Oh, like Moses, like Job, like Stephen, like Paul, like John the Baptist. Learn to weigh your affliction in the light of his glory and despise his shame so you can endure the pain and, and, and even bless your enemies. Ah, so verse 3. Verse 3 says, For consider him, we're talking Jesus, that endured such contradictions. The contradictions in the Bible is oppositions of sinners against him. He suffered. And then he said, you, you, when, you, when you are suffering, consider Jesus. Think about Jesus. Before you throw in the towel, consider Jesus. And then what? And then what? And then what? And then what? Lest, you see that word there? Lest, so that you will be, you will not be, lest ye be wearied and what? Faint in your heart. What does it mean? Lest you become discouraged and give up. That's what he's saying. So when you're going through troubles, don't look at the trouble. Don't look at the storm. Don't look at the tribulation. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. And your trouble will fade in the light of his glory. Can you say amen, somebody? Oh, but remember, 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 Isaiah says in Isaiah 14, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth what? Strength. Isaiah 40, 29. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Brethren, I just want to tell East New York, never, never, never give up. No matter what. For many years, Dr. Jeff Ray served as professor of preaching in Texas. He taught when he was more than 80 years old. Early in his adult life, his wife died, leaving him to serve as mother and father to his children. One day in the 1930s, he received the news that a beloved son had died. These calamities threatened to depress him so much. For a time, he quit teaching and preaching altogether. Depressed and dejected, he lost interest in everything and was about to give up. Mrs. L. L. Elliot, wife of the seminary librarian, librarian, sent her husband to visit Dr. Ray with a scrapbook filled with poems, which had encouraged her. After Dr. Elliot departed, the weary professor listlessly lived through the pages of the scrapbook, a poem with the title, I Won't Let Go, caught his attention, realizing that he had been wanting to do just that. He read these words. And listen, I want to let go, but I won't let go. There are battles to fight by day and by night for God and for the right. And I will never let go. I want to let go, but I won't let go. I am sick, it is true, worried and blue, and worn through and through, but I won't let go. I won't let go, but I won't let go. I will never yield. What? Lie down on the field and surrender my shield? No, I will never let go. I won't let go, but I won't let go. May this be my song 
made legend, legends, made legends of wrong. Oh God, keep me strong that I may never let go. Daughter Ray closed the scrapbook, arose from his couch and grieve and defeat and put behind him forever any thought of giving up and return to the classroom to teach and to the pulpit to preach. Brethren, I want to let go, but I won't let go. It's New York, I want to let go, but I won't let, I won't let go. Ah, because his grace is sufficient for me. For his strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh, his strength is perfect. The mic is letting go. <laughs> okay, yes. So his strength is made perfect. Oh, yes, I'm here. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. Somebody said, He will carry us when we can carry on. Raising his power, the weak become what? Strong. That's why I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where, where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. He never said there, will be, there wouldn't be trials. Never said I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I want it to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel all hope is gone, I just lift up my head to the sky and say, help me to be strong. I just can give up now. Oh, but what can we do? Paul says, shake off. Press on. Calm down. Look up and never give up. Oh, for in Jesus' name. What did I say? In Jesus' name. The songwriter says, we press on. And when the choices are hard, now help me with this. What do we do? Oh, say it like you mean it. When, 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 when the choices are hard, we press on. When we are battered and scared, when we've spent all our resources, when we've given our all, in Jesus' name, we press on. In Jesus' name, we press on. Oh, and the song says, Dear Lord, with the prize clear before our eyes, give us the strength to press on and to press on and to press on to the finish line. Oh, until we reach the sea of glass and sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, how we made it over. So, uh, brethren, press on until we see Jesus. Press on until we hear from his lips. Press on until we shall hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Oh, then all God's people, all God's children, from the Old Testament, to the New Testament, we receive our Olympic medals of golden crowns. In the meantime, press on. Until then, press on. With your cross on your back, press on. And the faith, your faith in your hand, press on to the finish line. Press on by faith, even in trouble, even in tribulation, even in persecution, even in sickness, by faith, for faith is the victory. We know that overcomes the world. So in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, press on until we receive our victor's crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Press on to the finish line.
I believe we can uh, present ourselves before the Lord to help us, give us the strength to be able to press on all the way, no matter what come our way, that we're never going to give up. And we're going to shake down and we're going to press on until we reach the sea of glass, until we reach the finish line. So as we sing the closing song, which is uh, 608, we're going to, we're going to present ourselves before the Lord. Victory, uh, faith is the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And with faith, all things are possible. So let's sing it and uh, present ourselves to the Lord to help us to make it to the finish line. Faith is the victory. Yes, Lord. The victory. By faith, we're going to make it. They all made it by faith. And so with faith in our hand and the cross of Jesus behind us, we're going to make it to the kingdom. But Yes, we shall receive our crown. The trophy shall be ours. In the sea of glass. As we sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. And we're going forward. The hills of light. Our hearts. Love of flame. Faith is a victory. Oh, the hosts of night. In Jesus come, he's conquered already. Claim it is the victory. Now, brethren, you need a little help to make it. You need encouragement from the Holy Spirit. You need power to make it. Why don't you come? Let's just come and receive special prayer to help us to make it to the finish line. Having come so far. That we drop out. No, sir. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it by faith. Yes. We're not going to drop out. We're going to make it to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Come. It's the victory. Hallelujah. I need a little help to make it in a time of need, in a time of discouragement, in a time of stress. In the time of depression, that you give me help to make it to the finish line. Faith is the victory. 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 Faith is
Come, 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 come. We need it. We need it. Time is short. Time is short. We need all the help we can get. All the help we can get to make it to the finish line. Brethren, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The same race we are running is the same race Abraham, Abel, Noah, Joseph, all of them ran. And they obtained a good report. They ran on the duress. They ran in trouble. They ran in persecution. They ran in adversities, in afflictions. But they never gave up. Some of us have to do the same. No matter what your affliction is, in Jesus' name, you are more than conqueror. Some of us in this church must be like Moses. You and your family pray together. And if you see that the devil is frustrating you with immigration issues and you have to forsake Egypt and suffer the affliction with the children of God back home, so be it. This time in which we live is not a time we're going to joke anymore. We just have to do what God calls us to do. And in God's own timing, he can bring you back. But you want to do everything God's way. They did it back then. We can do it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? So we're going to pray and ask the Lord, whatever your need is, whatever your besetting sin is, whatever your need is to make it to the finish line. We're going to pray. I'm going to ask Sister Mirage to pray for us that we can, God will give us that special unction, that help so none of us will give up as we journey to the kingdom no matter what. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we're grateful that we have an on-time God, a 24 hours a day God, a God who never slumbers and a God who never sleeps. Lord, you have made conditions for us to inherit the blessings that you have provided. We pray this afternoon that we would look into our individual lives Forsake these sins that so easily beset easily, us. Easily. Meet the conditions that you have set for us mm. so we can continue to march on to glory. Yes. Lord, we know that we are living in the dark time of the soul. And sometimes we make decisions that are not right before you. Mm -hmm. We ask you this afternoon that you would open our mind's eyes. That we may see what is right. Yes. That we may ask you to go ahead of us that the path you have laid out for us, we will follow. We want to see you in peace. We want to live right. But the only way for us to do that is to submit to you. Yes. And so we come this afternoon, Lord, asking you, begging you to hear our humble cry. While on others you're calling, dear God, please don't pass us by. Stop by here at East New York this afternoon. Look into our individual hearts. Sometimes, Lord, the decisions to make are so difficult. Yes, but the sacrifice will be worth it yes, after Lord. all. Because when you stood in Gethsemane that night, it would have been easy to give yes. up. And you got to the place where you ask your father, mm. if it is possible, mm. let this cup depart from mm. me. But through obedience to your That's father and love for me yes. and all of us, not my will, my God, yes. but yours be done. On Calvary as you hung there in pain, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm. But yet you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
this afternoon, oh Holy Spirit, you have been here with us from morning until now. And we say to you, have mercy on us. Look at our hearts. Take away the things that are unlike you from yes, us. Lord. Sacrifice is not easy, but it will be worth it after Glory. all. Yes. And this is where your children need to go. It is lead painful. Us. Yes. Lead us, oh God, lead us. For if you lead us, we cannot stray. Yes. And so we leave all in your hands. Oh, yes. Father, as we come together as a family, we leave the shepherd, your son, in your care. Thank you, Lord. Give him an anointing like you have never done before. Yes, Lord. You ask us to come and ask for what we want. And if you see it's right for us, you will give us. This afternoon, we ask that you take him to California safely. Yes, Lord. That you administer the treatment. Yes, Lord. And that you bring him safely back yes, because Lord. you are God. Yes, Lord. And there's nothing impossible with you. Yes, we Lazarus was dead for four days and you brought him back. Yes. Then can't you bring your son home? Hallelujah. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. Because you're God and there is none like you. Yes. We pray for Sister Yangson and their children. Cover them with your righteous right, and we ask, O oh God, send angels that excel in strength to guard the four corners of their home. Hold Sister Yangsa's heart in your hands and help her to know that you are the only God. You are the bomb in Gilead, and that you will keep her because you have kept her from birth until now. Yes. Touch the hearts of the children. Help them, Lord, as you open their eyes to see you as they have never seen you before, as they call upon your name and believing that they have a God in heaven that will bring their daddy home. And you can, we know your words are true and faithful because your word is even above your name. Yes. And so, Lord, as we come this afternoon, hear our humble cry. Yes. While on others you're calling, don't pass this congregation by. Yes. Each of us has something that we need to be rid of. In the name of Jesus, we want to Jesus. submit and we are submitting. Yes. Help us, Lord, so we can make it to that place that you have prepared. Yes. One day, not long from now, there will be no more prayers and we look forward to that day. There will only be praise. But until then, we leave it all in your hands. Do for us more than we can hope, ask, or desire. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Victory in the name of Jesus.